machine learning and artificial intelligence. I once again welcome you all. This is Rishabh and I'll be a trainer for artificial intelligence as well as machine learning. Yeah, let's get started with this exciting journey. Yeah, and to check what are the key ingredients of AI. Yeah, so the main USP of our training folks is that we start from the very, very base stepping stone, right? We don't assume that you come from any background, right? It's completely a new fairy tale world for you guys, right? So don't worry about it. We will completely take care of the prerequisites, right? So don't, we don't assume anything that you come from a specific background, yeah? Or you do have any kind of prerequisites. Cool. So before getting started, folks, let me tell you about this particular session that at the moment, folks, you all are kept on mute. At the moment, you all are kept on mute. Yeah. So if you have any questions, don't worry. I'll come to each and every one of you every 15 to 20 minutes just to take your queries and whatever doubts you have so far about this particular course. I'll explain you about the curriculum also while explaining the slides that what are we going to cover in this particular curriculum yeah, in this particular course. And meanwhile, I'll be taking your questions as well. But at the moment, just hold on to your questions. I'll come to you and you can ask any questions that you want. Speak your heart out, folks. So, you know, I generally tell my students that when you are in this particular topic, your mind should be open, your heart should be open, right? Whatever questions, whatever silliest questions you have, yeah, please shoot. You are free to shoot at any point of time. Yeah, cool. So let's begin. Right. So <clears throat> just a brief on mine, folks, that I was based out of London for a long, long time. Very fortunate enough to work with the founder of Hadoop, that is Dove Cutting in Cloud Era. Have done many, many, many trainings into data science and machine learning. Artificial intelligence, I have just started since past one and a half, two years, because deep learning and the libraries like Keras and TensorFlows have prospered a lot since past two, two and a half years. So since past two years, I've been doing the trainings onto artificial intelligence with a couple of companies like Accenture, IBM, and a couple of the big fours, right? And I have been doing corporate trainings across Asia, Pac, and Europe, right? So majority of my trainings and my students were from London prior and from Europe, yeah, but I have recently shifted to Bangalore due to family reasons. I'm doing the consulting stuff from here and as well as I do trainings apart from this. Training is my passion, right? I'm a committer into Hive and I basically have created a couple of modules into MongoDB as well as a product, right? So this is my brief background. People who have already gone through my sessions into big data and data science would be knowing me very well, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, because big data, machine learning, data science, I've been doing it since over five and a half, six years, right? Artificial intelligence is one of the finest things at the moment that is of keen interest to me, right? And most of my research work at the moment is going into neural networks as well, especially the GANs, the Generative Adversarial Networks and all, right? So let me clear the base. Cool. So let's begin. What and why? See, basically, folks, you know, sometimes I hear the term artificial intelligence being very loosely used with machine learning. Yeah? Artificial intelligence very loosely used with machine learning, right? People often get confused. Hey, is machine learning artificial intelligence? Yes, it is, but it is a subset of it. It is just one of the part of it. 
there are many layers attached to artificial intelligence like deep learning reinforcement learning all of them right so let's see them step by step what they are first of all who is us versus them us is humans homo sapiens sapiens and them are machines boom <clears throat> yeah see we learn from experience humans do learn from experience and machines learn from data the inputs given <clears throat> yeah the inputs that you are given to the machine fine you feed in a robo and the robo behaves in such a way right who cool. right we have seen many movies onto that like transformers right you feed it it behaves in such a way you program it it behaves in such a way based on your experience program it experience program it experience train it train it yeah so it's all about training it's all about training yeah i'll just give you an example folks remember when we were students when we were students i'm talking about the school days we are lifelong students as such but <clears throat> consider in our school days right uh, what used to happen that teachers used to teach us for the year long and then we used to give examination based on that based on the training and the experience and the practice that we have done so far at the end of the year we have to give an examination correct yeah we got to give a test yeah so basically teacher is the one we call it over here as a data yeah teacher teaches to whom the student in this case student is our robo our model yeah and teacher teaches based on her experience right so this is the training that we give to the student and then the student performs in the examination and we check the accuracy same thing happens with machine you train the machine and finally you test the machine whether on an external data set that whether the machine is working well or not it's just like you know teacher has trained us on several topics on several examples yeah of the same concept but of the same concept different data you get as a question in your examination and you get that you take it proceed further right fine based on your experience based on how the teacher has taught the student student performs in the examination right that's what machine learning is all about machine learning is you feed in the data tell the machine that okay by based on this input you get this output based on this input you get this output and then finally machine gets trained that hey if this kind of a generalized input if i get it i get this kind of an output got that yeah got that <clears throat> and it's applied everywhere it's applied everywhere right let's take the example of real estate folks see till now what has been our experience into real estate you stay in any damn city be it mumbai san francisco paris london madrid copenhagen anywhere yeah uh, let's say we take any specific area in that particular city so do we have a human calculation a basic human calculation that hey if the area of the house increases if the area of the house increases the property prices rises yeah can we have that kind of a determination from our past experience that hey if the area increases the price increases correct if area increases price increases yeah good 
that is one such input feature based on which we can map our output feature yeah definitely fine cool so you know close to work no traffic power backup these are other amenities based on which pricing also can be decided but let's take at the moment one input feature area versus pricing pricing of the house so <clears throat> you see this is the data point that I already have fine so if I get any external data or let's say someone asks me hey can you predict the price if the area is so and so square feet Hey, right? let's say the area is 900 square feet predict the price for me right so but definitely what I'll do is based on this x and y axis I, I, I'll just create a line passing through them and then I'll see where my 900 square feet is touching the price right you see a line I have drawn this this is called a slope yeah this is called a line best fitting the data yeah it's called line of best fit best fitting the data right now if someone asks me hey hey tell me yeah 45 lakhs what's the price basically yeah the price is 45 lakhs for that particular square feet so basically with this small input feature one single input feature we are able to guess we are able to guess the price in an approximate way obviously it won't be bingo it won't be 100 percent perfect or accurate but we are almost nearby that call that yeah this is called linear regression simple linear regression just based on one input feature we are able to determine the output yeah regression regression basically has a formula available yeah there is a slope formula available for regression and we call that as y equals mx plus c this equation we have studied in our school yeah so guys how is our training pedagogy in this particular training how we teach our folks that's very important for you guys to know first of all folks what we do is for each technique that we take we understand the basic mathematics lying behind basic maths for that particular technique we study the mathematics behind that technique then we study its concept conceptual understanding of that technique yeah we visualize it yeah based on the applications and finally we do its source code sample code of it yeah we write the source code for that particular technique or application cool so we always get started with basic math lying behind that technique that is over here when we start with regression we'll study this particular equation in depth in depth got that cool because machine learning artificial intelligence under the hood if you see it's all mathematics pure mathematics fine so we'll start with that level cool <clears throat> now you know generally if people ask me hey can you tell me what is machine learning the types of machine learning you know guys in 80s yeah in 80s people used to classify machine learning as two types one is regression another is classification regression that you saw and another type is classification these are the two types of machine learning techniques that were being classified in 80s <clears throat> yeah in 80s but in 90s what happens what happens in the 90s then yeah in 90s a general classification came yeah that basically machine learning you classify it into supervised unsupervised 
and reinforcement. Yeah, supervised learning technique, unsupervised learning technique, and reinforcement technique. I'll come to that later. First of all, let's see this classification model. You know, guys, every day you guys are doing the classification. Every day, believe me, you guys are doing the classification, but you don't know under the hood it's happening. Yeah, you get a mail on your Gmail of some credit card and you are not at all interested in credit card. Just I'm giving you a <coughs> topic. You are least interested in credit card mails especially. So what do you do? You spam them. Fine. So what happens? Our Gmail gets trained that hey, if credit card emails are coming, you are spamming them, spamming them, spamming them. So it checks the subject line. Yeah. Checks the subject. It's relevant contents and spam it accordingly. It will spam it accordingly. So you might find it in your spam email, junk email, something like that. So loan. You get a loan? Yeah, you, you get the loan emails. Everyone is getting it, right? In their inboxes somewhere. You get some loans, financial loans, some some other, other spam emails, we all are getting it. Right? So we train our model that hey, if this many times this kind of loan emails are coming, I'm spamming it. Right? So <clears throat> here, what's the probability that the next email comes of loan, it will be spam? Yeah. Fine. In the next email, the new upcoming email that would come to my inbox, be it Gmail, Yahoo Mail, whatever you are using, will be spam. Yeah. These are the options. What do you select? Obviously 80% or 80% of the chance, right, that I'm spamming it based on the past experience. Right? This is classification. Classification. Right? Fine. So when we see classification, one of the basic technique about classification is naive based algorithm. A naive based algorithm, Bayesian statistics is the one from where we'll get started on. Yeah. Now classification also has many types. This is just one type that I told you. Right. This is one type. <coughs> Which every day you are seeing it. Yeah. Be it as a customer of Amazon, a member of eBay. Yeah, every day you are doing some classification, you are picking some items, putting it into the basket. And finally, finally, what Amazon is doing? Amazon is basically giving you some recommendations. Yeah. Let's say I have bought Harry Potter books. Yeah, Harry Potter. So can I call Harry Potter as some sci-fi? I don't think so. Fiction? Yes, I can call fiction Harry Potter. Yeah. So next time if any book on fiction gets released, I get recommendation for the same. Because Amazon knows my taste. Amazon even knows, let's say even if I'm a new user, based on my friends, they can uh, make the interest you know how we are connected with friends based on that liking we get recommendations yeah recommendations are just one way of strategizing the sales be it Netflix be it Amazon be it eBay be it any mutual fund industry investment banking all of them are using recommendations they are using it but based on the clients interest otherwise you know recommendation will not work you know, you see over here, a simple data I have given you guys. <clears throat> yeah, a simple data. That those who are all teenagers are using a gaming application. People who are in their 20s are using Twitter a lot. People who are above 20s or in their 30s or 40s are using Facebook a lot. Right? Cool. This is just some sample data. I have it. Now, what can give me a clue? Can this gender give me any kind of a clue of if a new data comes in, let's say a male or a female, I can able to classify that hey, that person will be using Facebook or Twitter or any game? No. Gender is not giving me any clue. 
it does not give me any clue while age is giving me a clue some clue age is giving me so I can find out that okay age is one of the criteria one of the input feature that is helpful for me yeah so what I can do is I can make a tree out also out of it that hey can I club both of them and I can have a clue on them that that is also possible I can form a tree decision tree by which I call it so in this case what is the data better age or gender obviously age as we can see it from the data itself you see it's giving us very good classification fine so age yeah simplest decision tree that we have found decision tree helps us in making many judgments whether a person will default the loan or not based on the input features given whether a person will be a defaulter or not fine good cool so <clears throat> decision tree similarly admission time yeah <coughs> let's say some of you would have enrolled in the uni US University is gone for MS masters abroad right so <clears throat> people basically for studying are applying to different different universities now how the universities accept how the universities do accept their application can I can I don't keep any humans over there and let the machine itself take judgment on its own yeah that whether a student should be admitted or not let's leave it to the machines let's forget about humans do exist in this world right right because that's what happening right you know these days you are hearing a lot related to you know jobs getting slashed in the IT industry or job losses happening have you ever heard a skilled professional or a skilled person getting slashed from the job yeah or is losing the job until unless the business gets shut down that's a different thing right but apart from that you won't find that right who are getting fired people who are doing the manual iterative tasks continuous manual iterative tasks because why automation has happened robotics has come in as well as as well as artificial intelligence is one of the strongest reasons we are leaving everything to the source code to the model to the machine because machine can do the same task iteratively with high precision human can't do it and even with lesser cost why to pay the salary right cool got that so you might hear a lot you know these days manual testers getting fired a lot manual testers why it's a cakewalk now right so let's come back to our example folks yeah so you see <clears throat> there are different students that I have lined up for you this is student one who is having grade as 8 test score 9 out of 10 this is student two whose grades are 3 out of 10 test score 4 out of 10 and this is student 3 grades 6 on 10 test score 7 on 10 you get that these are multiple students different students <coughs> yeah Color? Cool. So you have multiple students. Now, student one, I know student one will get admitted. I have the information student two didn't got admitted. But now if someone asks me a question to the machine that hey, whether whether a student three will get admitted or not. Whether a student three, I don't know about student three, it's an external data. Yeah, whether a student 3 will get admitted or not. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, let's see over here. One is an acceptance, another is a rejection. And I have this past history of data that I have. Yeah, one of my data set is lying here. Another data set is lying here. So can I plot like in regression that I plotted a line, can I plot a line over here and do some segmentation? That okay, 
any data that is lying in the right side of this line gets admitted left side of this line rejected will this work do you do you think will this work yeah this brute force approach will this work yeah do you think it will work i don't think so there is some goof up what is the goof up yeah okay let's say if i have some student over here this one yeah whose test score yeah is 9 out of 10 but grades are very low grades are very low right do you think that university will have the slightest of interest to take that student no logically thinking i don't think so the student should get admitted so here there is an inaccuracy of our machine learning algo yeah inaccuracy but right now let's not get involved in that inaccuracy let's see about the student 3 will the student 3 get admitted or not if i plot it test score is over here 7 grade score is 6 so where is 6 lying over here somewhere over here that point will be somewhere over here 7 and 6 7 over here 6 over here 7 6 so i think they have the student has a chance of getting selected student has a chance of getting selected fine this is logistic regression where i get categorical outcome where i get a categorical outcome that's logistic regression when i get a numerical outcome that's linear regression cool but will this logistic regression work fine always let's see let's see in this case the same thing which i told you right let's say i have another student who has great test scores but extremely poor grades yeah yeah so now what to do what to do let's say i have a data set like this can i give a linear regression line over here yeah yeah i don't think so because there are many data set fine which is on the right side of it which are not accepted or rejected so can i do one more thing as a human can i draw another line over here and i say that in this line for this particular line line one anyone which is in the right side and for line two anyone which is above above line two so right hand side of l1 and upper side of line two gets accepted can i do like that can I do like that? I can. I can. This is what human brain teaches us, right? Right? By adding another dimension to it. That's what neural networks is. Adding another dimension. Fine. So how a brain thinks, we get the inputs. There is a hidden layer considered to be our brain, which is working in a very complex fashion. And still some research is going on that how exactly your brain is able to take complex judgment in the final output layer, right? You know, <clears throat> there is a lot of study going on in Stephen Hawking's brain because that person from head to toe, right, leaving the brain apart, everything is damaged of that person, but he's a fantastic physicist. Great theory is coming from his head. How? Right? How? Fine. So, adding more dimensions. Yeah? Now, now, you know guys, adding dimensions is fine, but which line is better? This one or this one? Let's say this is also doing a classification. This is also doing a classification be between this pink and blue. Right, but which line is better? 
which is doing a better classification which line should i select there are you know in your real time also you might have options in selecting the model but which model to select which line to select which classifier to select how you will decide how you will decide based on minimum error and better classification maximum accuracy so you see over here <coughs> this line is giving us more gaps yeah why if i take another line this is also giving me good gaps so which line shall i select the yellow one or the purple one yeah which one that's what support vector machine helps us support vector machine has some kernel trick which can what it does is it will completely have a glass view of the data glass view that means the same data can i represent that in three dimensional three dimensional data instead of two dimensions can i have a 3d data and add dimensions and have a proper classifier over there instead of just giving lines or regression can i add a dimension or a kernel yeah i'll come to kernel later what is a kernel and all but it's just adding dimensions third 3d it's basically you know <clears throat> let's say you go for a medical checkup sometimes x ray doesn't give you a proper review what do you do you do mri mri scan right because that gives you the entire nitty gritty of what has happened in the body each nerve it can pick it up right so this is considered to be the mri scan of machine learning support vector machine got that cool hungry hungry let's see if i've got to figure it out where i get the chicken biryanis right i am staying in a particular area i don't want to travel too far but i am conscious about specific brands i want a specific brand right i have it i have the data set the data points and that data points gives me area wise where that particular brand is distributed now i need to pick and choose which area shall i go right so clustering one of the basic clustering technique is k means clustering k means yeah k is nothing but how many clusters you want 1 2 3 so here k is 3 k means clustering right cool so how the distance between the cluster is decided based on the distance that distance we call it as euclidean distance yeah how we can say a particular data set is near or far or together or not together based on euclidean distance based on euclidean distance euclidean distance will tell me <clears throat> or give me a clue that it's x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square yeah fine so if i want to designate a point for each cluster is representing a cluster representing a cluster characteristics of the cluster what i do initially random points i'll select in the graph somewhere and then i'll try and change based on the centroid i'll figure out the centroid and then i have a point which showcases that particular cluster this is the centroid of this cluster centroid of this cluster centroid of this cluster 
Yeah. Cool. So this continuous changes I'll be doing in such a way that until and unless it converges with the data. That's called k means cluster. Cool. So you know, as I told you, artificial intelligence and machine learning is very much entangled to each other, but machine learning is just a subset of it. If someone asks me about AI, generally I say, yeah, and it's my definition that the brain, the real brain of artificial intelligence is deep learning, the neural nets, yeah? And the actual hands and legs of artificial intelligence is reinforcement learning, which gives the locomotion, right? So these are all the pillars of artificial intelligence. So machine learning is just a part or a subset of it actually this is the complete artificial intelligence periodic table. Yeah. Periodic table we have seen it in our chemistry labs, right? All the elements, all elements. So these are all elements of artificial intelligence. Yeah. The thing can be taken out. When you know all of them, that means you know something about AI. Got it? As I told you, this is the brain of it. Now in deep learning folks, <clears throat> many techniques also will be seen. So we'll start with machine learning as our core foundation for this particular course. Step by step we'll approach towards machine learning and then gradually we'll move towards deep learning. Yeah? So in machine learning what happens? You know, many things you need to do it manually, feature extraction, classification, all that. But in deep learning, both of them are entangled together. Both of them are very much entangled together. Feature extraction with classification. And finally, you get the output out of it. Yeah, so these are some of the techniques, folks, in neural nets that we'll be seeing. Got that? Yeah? And these are some of the use cases folks that we'll see in our deep learning. Image recognition, we'll see that how translation can happen, how Google Translate actually works, actually works at the back end. Yeah, fine. <clears throat> how recommendation works with the help of deep learning. And let's say you speak something, let's say, you know, you type in Google, yeah, dog walking near the sea and you get the images related to that. Yeah, that's one of the fantastic use case of deep learning. That based on your words, it can plot an image and based on the image, it can even give you the words. Right? So, let's say if I showcase a Mona Lisa painting, I'll get the complete description of Leonardo, where it is kept in Paris, Versailles Museum, etc, etc. <coughs> yeah? Cool. Call that. <clears throat> so many techniques are associated with it, like convolutional neural nets, how you take or analyze pixel by pixel and get an information out of an image. Recurrent neural nets, how you do the speech synthesis and all. Right? So these are some of the techniques of deep learning that we'll be studying in depth. And Reinforcement learning, a latest entrant in the TensorFlows and the Keras. And you would love reinforcement learning, folks, frankly speaking, because, <clears throat> you know, as such, we all are greedy people. Yeah, human beings, we all are greedy. How we make our judgment? We make our judgment based on the reward. Yeah, I'll just give you a very simple example. And we are greedy from birth. By birth, we are greedy. It's not that we have become greedy over a period of time. No. Just I'll give you a very simple example. Let's say you are a student. You are a student and you are trying to attempt 
you are giving an examination and you are just left out with five minutes. You are just left out with five minutes. Got that? And you need to answer only one question. You have you have time to answer only one question. You have time to answer only one question in these five minutes. Now one question is of 15 marks. Another question is of 20 marks. <clears throat> you can finish any one of them. Which one will you pick? Obviously 20 marks. Why? Because it's giving you better reward. More reward. So based on your reward, your policy is decided and based on your policy, you take the action. Based on your reward, your policy is divide, revised and decided and based on the policy, you take the action and attempt <clears throat> the second question or answer the second question. That's what reinforcement learning is all about in short. Right? So these are different techniques of doing reinforcement learning folks, Monte Carlo and all. We'll be seeing that. And reinforcement learning is one of the pioneer technology in self-driving cars. These days, you know, you all would have heard of concept of self-driving cars. Yeah, have you heard? All of you? <clears throat> yeah, I've already seen self-driving buses in Amsterdam, in Netherlands. Yeah, it has already started in some of the villages in Netherlands. Yeah, you won't believe, folks. It's not US, it's not Canada, it's not any other country from Asia. It's Netherlands, which is one of the most innovative country across the world. Early adopters of any technology, seriously. I've seen it. I've traveled across the world, but any new thing, they are ready to experiment it. Yeah, seriously, those guys are brilliant geeks, right? The Dutch people. <clears throat> so, this is how it's being decided. Based on the reward, yep, we revise our policy and take the action. Got that? Cool. You see? A brilliant example. Where you go? Near the water or near the fire? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Getting the clue of reinforcement, folks. You can read these six steps. <clears throat> and that's what AI is all about. So here we need to reach, folks. We'll start from very basic machine learning. We'll study the Python, libraries, pandas, scikit-learn and all gradually move towards TensorFlow, Keras and all and try and implement deep learning and reinforcement learning with those libraries. It will be fun. You know, if you would have loved mathematics in your school days, this is literally going to be fun. I'm going to make it as simple as possible. Yeah, but <clears throat> I need your support, your enthusiasm. Main thing is your enthusiasm and passion to study. Rest all leave it to us. Right? At least I need an enthusiasm. I need questions from you guys. Yeah? It should not be you should be just passive students. No. Be a bombarding student. I love that. Right? Cool. Yeah? So questions time folks. Questions time. Anyone having any questions, please click on the hand symbol. Please click on the hand symbol. I would love to talk to you. Any questions that you have folks. Any, any damn question. Anything. Speak your heart out. 2 plus 2, you can ask that kind of a question also. Yeah, please. Speak your heart out and <clears throat> click on the hand symbol. Those who are having any questions, please click on the hand symbol. I would love to talk to you. Yeah, let me first come to uh, Krishna. Yes, Krishna. Krishna Gajula, speak up. Hello, yeah. This is Krishna here. So I yep. just want to know whether um, um, I mean, is Python and any other programming language mandatory for this? 
See, basically, uh, <coughs> we'll start with Python, learning Python. Yeah, because Python is something which is at the moment core to machine learning these days, and it's a core to artificial intelligence, and the deep learning libraries also that you see are all built on Python. So we'll start learning Python first, its scientific libraries. Don't worry if you don't know about Python or any coding language. Python is very, very easy to code. Even these days, school children are coding in Python, so don't worry about that. We'll make you learn uh, at least what is required for machine learning and to study the scientific libraries, and gradually we'll progress. So if you don't have any background in Python, don't worry at all. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Now, let me take a few questions that I have it in the question box as well. Yeah. At the moment, any certification is present in artificial intelligence? No. There is no certification present, folks, as far as any vendor of AI is concerned. Yes, there are private certifications, but no actual any global authority or any global vendor who is providing any certification in AI. Yes, for machine learning, we have certifications for data science. There are people like Cloudera and all giving the certifications, but for AI, we don't have it. Yep. I've got a question from Mahdi Fati. Could you introduce Python's resources? Yes, we will be seeing libraries like Pandas, NumPy, Scikit-learn. Yep. So from session two onwards, this is demo session. The next session is session one, and from session two onwards, I'll be introducing you to the Python libraries, the basic libraries that we should know, like Pandas, Scikit-learn, and you will get all materials as well from our end. So don't worry about that. The slides, the PDFs, all the assignments, you will be getting it from our end. Many of the things will be doing it during course itself. With us, you guys will be doing the hands-on. Yeah, and I'll be giving <coughs> ample amount of time. Don't worry about that. But some as homework also will be getting during the weekends or so. Yeah, because I do understand you all are working professionals. You all have your own work commitments. Yeah, so <clears throat> I won't keep you much busy during the weekdays, but definitely I'll make sure your weekends get spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, so <clears throat> yes, you got to be with us. Cool. Don't worry. Even if you miss out any session, guys, you can get the recording from our team. Yeah, so what is our team? This is our team. You can contact them at any point of time for any other details. Yeah, they're 24 by 7 available. Even if you got, you want to get in touch with me, you can collect my contact details from them. They'll provide it to you. Yeah, so they are 24 by 7 available, 365 days book. So please be in touch with them. Yeah, and don't worry. So I've got a question from Tilak Chand that, hey, I am from a manual testing background. I don't have any background in the programming skills. Don't worry, Tilak. In our previous batch, you know, there were around 10 people into AI who were from McKinsey. They were nowhere related to any kind of coding. Yeah, fine. At least you would have some, done some Linux commands. You know, those guys have not done anything. They were all pure business analysts. Right, so don't worry. They all have attended our AI trainings and have started the pillars in McKinsey itself, right? So don't worry about that. We'll take care. Yeah. I got a question from Kanchan Pal. Where we can use this artificial intelligence? Because I see after five years now, still banks and companies are not willing to adopt big data fully. Uh, see, big data and AI are different things, <clears throat> if you ask me. Uh, big data, see, I have been with big data since its inception, since the birth of Hadoop, frankly speaking. Why the banks were hesitant, and I'm, I can tell you about the scenarios in Canary Wharf in London, because Canary Wharf is just like a mini Silicon Valley of banks, right? All banks you will find it over there in Canary Wharf in London, like HSBC, Santander, Barclays, blah, 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 all of them. Banks were hesitant because of a couple of reasons. One, uh, there were no mature enterprise vendors available at that point of time. Now there are, but at that point of time it was not. Data governance was one of the biggest issues with the banks. 
cloud another big issue they wanted to have a private cloud and private infrastructure everything private yeah data security role based authorization so all these things were concerns of the bank but i don't think now banks have that big problems what it used to have it 7 years back when you know hadoop just came into the market or you know spark just came in or now things are getting more mature yeah data governance is also getting resolved data governance is always the issues with banks are still even not using the cloud infrastructure a lot have you ever seen banks using very much the cloud in no they have the private setup yeah because banks have to think a lot about the data i know but artificial intelligence is different artificial intelligence is i go to a bank i don't need to ask a human person hey which counter i need to go for the mutual fund investments or portfolio banking or uh, current account or savings account or let's say loan account or mortgage or something like that there would be a robo robo will be able to answer me yeah a helpful assistant will be there this is just one example i am giving you there are many many applications of artificial intelligence into banking apart from that yeah so sometimes you know <clears throat> uh based on the data fine i have a different experience but based on the credentials human credentials the new changes the new trends happening i have different uh, opinions for a uh, human so artificial intelligence uh, can e even help us in doing many tasks which is happening in a way how humans are thinking humans thinking and approach and experience but precision of a machine both getting club together that's what ai is all about chatbots create a chatbot from ai it's again one other another application robotic surgery is happening these days yes it's happening in canadian hospitals that's one of the finest example of ai self driving cars i'm not saying self driving cars is a big success but it's getting in place where the traffic conditions and the rules are in place self driving cars are working fine that it's not a big issue uber is experimenting it a lot many many of the companies are experimenting it a lot like even in, in amazon there is a drone you know i just delivered a training day before yesterday i finished a four days training of ai over there drones they are they have a drone team over there literally you won't yeah so sometimes you know <clears throat> i even might not be uh, uh, having the applications i visit a company yeah and then they tell me that why they want to learn artificial intelligence so that from my training they can apply it in their teams right so sometimes i know the technology but i don't have to do that application where it can be applied across domains right banking is just one of the sector cool got that any questions anyone having any questions click on the hand symbol i would love to hear your beautiful voice folks yeah all good so far cool so tomorrow we have the next class folks and please do attend any questions apart from this related to logistics timelines timelines will remain the same connect to the techie team and they'll guide you everything they are fully equipped 24 by 7 available you can whatsapp them viber them chat with them on skype email them yeah i would say email them you will get a response within no time right just check your inboxes folks you can check your inboxes from techy team techy techy learn team yeah and you will get all the response from them that's it for today take care bye bye see you cheers